fifth point from Sean Carroll was, if God had finally tuned the universe for life, it would look very different indeed. And he considers this, I think, to be his most important point. So um, I think there's a, there's a specific point and perhaps a more general one there. Um, I think the specific point he, was, he tries to say is that the universe is too fine-tuned. If God wanted it for a specific purpose, we'd just see enough, and but we wouldn't see anything else. So, for example, um, uh, and I'm not sure if this is actually an example he uses, but you might just expect a solar system with life in it. I think he does talk. I know I've read a, one of his it. blogs where he was, he was talking about that, yeah. which I've never understood exactly why he wouldn't think that God would want to leave, make naturalism yeah. look less... <laughs> Probable. Yeah. It seems like something got. A lot of skeptics expect God to have done much more in that area. Here seems to be an area where maybe there is some evidence. Too much. So naturalism yeah. doesn't look very natural. It doesn't yeah. look like a good explanation. The main problem with well, I have with that specific objection is um, so just just before I get to that, the more general objection might be something like the problem of evil. Yeah, to me, that's where the, 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 there is. You know, I can agree with them at yeah. some level on that. It's challenging for I, I think that's right. So. You know, after you've thought through the fine-tuning argument, you've got something to pop up, put on the scales, and then think through the argument, the problem of evil, and then just weigh it up and see what happens. But this this specific thing about the universe seems to be too fine-tuned. There's a there's a thing in, in when we compare theories in physics. So in this sort of Bayesian approach, a specific approach to probabilities. Um, if you have a piece of evidence that that, and you have sort of competing theories, if if neither if, if the, the probability of that evidence on both theories is the same, so neither of them has got an advantage, then it just cancels out. So if, if uh, I've used the example of a, of, of, of a phone being, of a phone, you just, you just went and picked up your phone. And <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm checking the time. We're supposed to meet someone soon, but we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you leave that in, that's good. Uh, <laughs> if if, if uh, of, of someone's robbing a bank, and suppose I think it's an inside job and you think... It, it's just some bank robbers who just went in and smashed the place up. And as they come in, I, you know, we see that one of them has a balaclava on. The balaclava is blue. Okay. Now, my theory that it's an inside job doesn't explain why the balaclava is blue. And so that's a sort of a point against my theory because there's, there's data there and my theory doesn't explain it. But your theory doesn't explain it right. either. <laughs> but it just cancels out of both. It just doesn't matter at all. Um, uh, it, it would only be relevant if, the, if we had some... The third some detective. Non -ad -hoc yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, 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 some third detective comes in and says, "Oh, I've been chasing the blue balaclava gang for the last six months, <laughs> and, and so clearly this is this is them." Um, so, if you know a universe which is too fine tuned is a massive problem for the multiverse, and this is where you get the Boltzmann brain problems, all these sorts of things. So, this, this, this. If you've got an idea of, of, of a multiverse, right? We've got this super theory, and it's going to tell us what the whole universe is like. And if you want to get predictions out of that, you've got to go, "All right, where's the life?" And, and what do the observers see? And one thing which you might think is a minor problem, but actually turns out to be a pretty major problem, is it might be the case that the most common way of making a life form, right, when you, when you find something that can answer your questions, right, and you say, how did you get here? Well, there, there, there will be life forms like us, which sort of, you know, live on a planet in some nice conditions and sort of develop in a certain way. But it might be much more common that the life says, well, I formed out of a spontaneous fluctuation about 20 seconds ago. Yeah. I've got 10 seconds left answering your stupid questions, right? This, this is the, <laughs> the Boltzmann brain hypothesis. You, you've made an observer, but you did it via a fluke. Um, if you've, if those are a problem precisely because uh, if you're waiting around in your theory for observers, Observers like us, which are very sort of require a lot of, you know, cosmic conditions to make happen. You make your galaxy. You got to make stars. You got to wait for a lot more snake, prerequisites right? than the yeah. Boltzmann brain. Which is um, a simple, certain simple hypotheses to be yeah. one of those. And so, if there's too much, if in a sense there's conditions in the universe which life here doesn't need, that's a problem for the multiverse. And so, at worst, at absolute worst, this yeah. cancels off. Right. If if yeah. we can't think, we if if there's a multiverse explanation, then there's no reason for that extra fine tuning, right? Um, and so that's a point against naturalism. And if we are in complete, we have no idea why I'd be here under theism either. Then we're in, we're both looking at a blue balaclava, right? The irrelevance cancels out. Yeah, it just cancels <laughs> out. And so, um, in, in fact, a lot of these cases, it it we can sort of think of ideas of why it is the case. I mean, you could sure you could make a. Uh, 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 Earth with just the solar system around, um, but then we wouldn't have the night sky, 
and you know that seems like a good thing. Ironically, I, I, some I, of his objections are yeah. if he's in this field of scientific study. Where I might be biased. I'm an astronomer, right? There so, you go. Yeah. yeah. But if you want to, if you want a universe with science, you need the predictability. Getting back to previous yeah. point, and if you want a universe that's massive that has yeah. all these interesting characteristics, then you want something larger than a solar system. Yeah. So in particular, the the one with the there's a special arrangement of, of just our solar system where we see order in the universe as far as the eye can see. Well, he says, oh, so that's not a case of fine-tuning. There might be some dynamical explanation of that. And sure, I mean, yep. then we're just back to the previous point. When that comes up, we'll look at it and we'll, we'll go again. And it's no, that we shouldn't presume that when we have the rematch naturalism versus theism, that the naturalism is going to do any better on that one than on this one. All right, well, we're out of time, but thank you so much for your, your thoughts and responses to some, value, some important things to consider from Sean Carroll. Yeah.